Hi Taurus, welcome to your November and December 2017 prosperity reading. It's Raina here. So for all of the signs during this time period, I created your affirmation or everybody's affirmation. And for Taurus, it is, I am willing to bend, cooperate, allow new insights and experiences to refresh my perspective. And I wrote that because Taurus is a fixed sign and sometimes you guys get an idea in your head and you just pursue it doggedly and that idea may be coming from a place that is no longer really valid for you and sometimes you just like get an idea that you want to do something and you don't consider whether or not you've changed since then. And so it's very important to reflect on your goals and reflect on why are these my goals? Am I are these really my goals or did somebody impose these upon me? And do I think I need to complete these goals to be accepted by another person or another group of people? And um, in terms of some of the transits that are happening for you in November and December, I'm talking about astrological, obviously. There's going to be a full moon in your sign on November 4th. And so this can tend to bring an awareness of the needs that you have, the things that you want to get more of in your life and the things that you want to move away from. A lot of times full moons are seen, seen as endings, so you may feel like you're going into a new phase. You may feel like you're highlighted in some way because the spotlight is on you. And because it's a full moon, that means that the sun is in the opposite sign, opposite house. So you're talking about Scorpio being in the seventh house and um, the sun. Uh, there. And the seventh house is partnership and the first house is the self. So your needs are being spotlighted at this time and how it relates to partnership. Maybe there's a partnership that is dragging you down and preventing you from accomplishing your goals. So that's happening and that can be, that awareness can really inform some inspired decisions for you in the coming months. So uh, I should have said too that with the sun being in that seventh house, that's not the only thing. There's a lot of emphasis on the seventh house. Um, there's Venus at the time of the new moon on November 18th. Venus will be there with the sun and Jupiter. These are all considered beneficial influences, but let's not get into, oh, this is detrimental, this is beneficial. Let's look at it as it's just considered, you know, encouraging. Um, and the new moon is new beginning, new beginnings. So it, aside from any kind of committed romantic partnership, this could be clients. You could be getting like a, just a deluge in new clients if you work for yourself. Or it could be saying in the next year, that you will benefit from cultivating that kind of arrangement. Maybe you have um, something in mind that you want to do and you can work one-on-one -on -one with people. You know, I'm just putting this out there. I don't know why this came into my head, being a personal trainer, for example, something like that. <clears throat> and uh, what else? Oh, in, in December, there's going to be a full moon in your second house of earned income and that's in Gemini, and um, that will be good for uh, any kind of money that was coming to you that perhaps was delayed, uh, or just if it's like a commission, or, oh, I guess it could be like a raise, but a bonus, that could be uh, giving you that uh, extra boost at that time. And there's still fallout from the lunar eclipse that happened in August in Aquarius. That's your 10th house. You may still be seeing 
things kind of um, rearranging themselves when it comes to your career. Maybe you're going to take a different direction. Maybe you are just totally done. Yeah, I mean, it, it will be more like change, a change agent in regards to your career or your place in the world. And so it could even be somebody who has been a stay-at-home parent who decides they want to go into the world and maybe they feel called to do so or the opposite. Maybe you've been this career person uh, and you thought that was your, your calling and the thing you want to do most of all is leave that environment and raise children. So it can it can work um, any particular way, but it's a radical shift. It could be a radical shift in certain regards because um, with Uranus in that tenth house, um, there can be for for Taurus people they can have all kinds of <laughs> surprises career wise throughout their lives. Okay, well I'm going to be picking uh, a few cards, oracle cards, along with a t tarot card and, um, and seeing what kind of themes arise with these cards. Uh, I have I've amassed quite a little selection of decks now and sometimes when I get a deck and I'm not really feeling it, it's a bit disappointing because I know I'm not going to use that or I might use it just very rarely and so that can be a little bit of a bummer. But um, when I do like a deck, then it's it's really fun because it's like, wow, this is something that I really am connecting to. Okay. And so I've had kind of like hits and misses with some of these decks, even if on Amazon they have like high ratings. Um, so that's just life in the big city, right? And so the decks I am going to use are decks that I resonate with. Uh, one of them is the Native Spirit deck. I'll show you the back of the cards. That's always fun to see the back of the cards. And I'm choosing two Earth-connected decks because um, t this is a, an Earth full moon. And so that would make sense to do so. But... Um, just remember that your, your real, um, as, as a Taurus person, you're very uh, connected to the earth, but you also should think about the unseen world, okay? The world that is not tangible uh, because you can get a little bit too caught up in having proof that something's going to be okay. When I do personal readings and people ask me yes or no questions, this is an example. And a lot of times I'll, I'll look at their sun sign and it will be a fixed sign. So the fixed signs are Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius. And, you know, inevitably, Fixed signs, they want to have guarantees about their future. Am I going to get this job? Is this job going to go through? See, I don't even think like that. Not, I'm not bragging. I have Taurus rising, so I, I do have uh, some Taurus in me. But I, I mean, I might wonder if I'm going to get this or that, but I know that there's no way of knowing that in advance, for sure, 100%. So those kind of questions... Um, I think that is, if you feel compelled to ask those kinds of questions that you want to know, you want to be uh, assured that certain things are going to happen for you, then that is part of the problem. Because it means that you cannot be happy unless X, Y, or Z happens. And the more that you can make space for the concept of there's only this eternal now moment, and I am content in this moment. I want certain things, I would prefer certain things, but I don't need them to be happy because I have this moment and I'm in bliss. The more you can cultivate that, the, the better off you're going to be. 
And yes, of course, we all have these desires, these, these goals, and that's how it should be. But you have to dance between the goals and the current state of affairs. So having co completed my lecture, um, now on to the card reading. Um, so I did pick a couple of decks that are themed with Earth kind of uh, themes. And then I'm going to also, I think I'm going to do the Wisdom of the Oracles in the Archangel deck. I think that would be good. White Buffalo. And I maybe I'll do... Maybe that's too many cards. I don't think I'm going to do the Tarot this time. I think I'm going to do Sandra Ann Taylor's uh, Energy Oracle because that seems to be very similar to the Tarot. So I think that would be good. Okay, Storm Warning. And let's see, now this is my Earth Magic Oracle deck. Ooh, I like this one. Unfoldment. Lotus Flower. Right now I've got my jacket on because it's really cold outside and it's like... It's like a lilac. Um, like a purple. <laughs> it's very bright purple. Uh, and I was just saying how... I got it at a thrift store for a dollar. It's a really good... It's like L.L. Bean, I think. Really well-made coat, but or you know fleece jacket, but it, it's this color is so purple that probably the person who had it didn't want it. It looks new. <clears throat> okay, just shuffling the. I really like this deck. This is the I don't know what the name of it is. Keepers of the Light. I really like this deck. This is one of my favorites. Faith. Ha! Huh, just what I was talking about with you having, you know, needing to know everything in advance. Humanity and Benevolence. Okay, I don't know if that's too much because I'm going to be reading from the booklet. I might not read every little last thing. Um, I'm wondering if I should go for the Wisdom of the Oracles. Yeah, why not? And I'll just read the Prosperity message because that's one of the reasons I like this deck. They have like a specific prosperity message. And I, I can't help but I'll pick this card, but I'm the back is so cool. Okay, and I think they have reversed the fates and it's number 17. That's one of my favorite numbers. I don't know if this is going to look lopsided. Oh well. I don't know if this one, I'm going to start with that card because um. It's called a protection message, so when it's upside down. It is difficult to understand why painful things happen to good people. Fate is a mystery after all, yet what we do with our circumstances, the way in which we respond to life's challenges, is how we rise up to greet our destiny. Now is one of those times to be aware of your powerlessness to change certain situations and surrender to acceptance. Hang in there. Life will only get better. Act as if you believe that. For the only thing you can do, yeah, for the only thing you can control right now is your attitude. When you align with the fates, being mindful of what you can and cannot change, serenity will come to you. And, um, it's um it, that's a really that's a really good good point because the planet uranus is going to go into your sign um for good in 2019 but it's going to uh, stick its dip its toe in in 2018 and this could really make uh taurus people feel quite um like things are happening uh, in an unpredictable way, and that is very, um, I, I don't, upsetting seems like a, a bad word, but it can be very upsetting to someone who likes things to be a certain way, they want them to be under control and manageable. So 
this is this might just be like some some kind of um mention of things that are to come because it's also dealing with uh finances because Taurus rules um resources earth earthly resources so this could affect the world at large but even for Taurians you have to start bending you know the Tao says the twig that can bend um, you know survives the the storm the, the 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 twig that is very rigid you know snaps in two so you can have your preferences you're very um, you're very persistent you're very organ you might be very disciplined and persistent you know and that is very good for business pursuits for career pursuits it's the ability, though, to, to remain flexible if plans change, if things change around you, and not to try to double down and try to be more controlling over it. I think that's kind of the message I want to convey. <clears throat> so let me start with these other cards. This is the Native Spirit, White Buffalo. And I think that's a good omen, as I recall. Just have to get out that deck. <laughs> this happened to me last time I recorded a reading. I was searching for all my decks. Okay, I mean uh, booklets. So white buffalo. Abundance and secure, security are flowing into your life. All things are possible. Balance and harmony prevail. You may be called upon to stand up for others. But you can do this because you have the support of many beings in the spirit realm. When this card chooses you, it's an honor, for it speaks of times of miracles and balance in all things. You are a channel for the greater forces in the universe. With their help, all is possible, but without it, things can be a struggle. Surrender to support from the great spirit. You do not have to do everything alone. Shape shift into the white buffalo and the energy this card brings will multiply tenfold. Imagine that you can feel the power in your muscles and the fecund earth beneath your hooves. Feel the weight of your horns and the warmth of your hide. This calls the deeper energies of white buffalo into your life. You know, I was thinking of um, the bull for a minute there. Okay, and then we have Storm Warning, and this is the, the Energy Oracles. <coughs> Number 10. Clouds on the horizon. This card indicates a potential difficulty either in the external world or within yourself and your emotional life. The difficulty is coming closer and you may have already heard rumblings of potential problems around you. The caution here is to be cautious or conscious yet not fearful. Consider what's going on and look at the situation with calm clarity. Investigate your options and honor yourself and your intentions. Stand up for yourself and take action on your own behalf. As with all difficulty, even the worst storm passes. Always remember, you have the power and the wisdom to handle whatever may come your way. And that, I think especially for that full moon, full moons can bring secrets out in the open and things like that. So, <clears throat> I mean, throughout our lives we have different challenges. So it's not anything, I wouldn't call it ominous. I think you have to be always prepared for things um, that you don't expect. And I think for Taurus, you have to keep reminding yourself that life is about change, is that you cannot keep everything and everybody under this little, um, in this little uh, bubble, and they never change. 
Lotus Flower Unfoldment. I love this. I love the color. This is that. That's the color of my uh, fleece jacket. Well, I'll show you. That's the color. <laughs> it's very purple. Um, unfoldment. I really, I really love. I I put a um, lotus on my um, website because I just love it so much on the homepage. Okay. This is what booklet is this? Earth Magic, I think. Yeah. And, and the whole symbol, the reason that it's used in spiritual, for spiritual, um, you know, emblems and stuff like that is, be, you know, symbols is because it represents it represents our soul, where we, it's pure, like a lotus, but there's this muck, and it kind of sits on top of that muck, which is kind of the, the world and the, and the negativity of the world. Your spiritual enfoldment is occurring at all times, whether or not you are aware of it. It is inevitable, as long as you put your trust in the hands of the Creator, the one who holds the light. Like the lotus, your soul is always reaching for the light to fulfill its karmic destiny. But even in that process, there are periods of darkness and times to rest. It is a natural cycle, one that cannot truly be coerced or halted. It has an innate rhythm of its own, one that is unique to the being that is you. You do not need to strive or be driven by spiritual ambition. It does no good to try to force growth upon yourself or others. For that matter, for, for that matter, um, Allowing is the key here. Uh, that is so true, the art of allowing. Allow the place in you that naturally wants to follow the light to do so, while recognizing that even when you have complete faith, you will face challenges and occasionally suffering. Your steady faith and love will guide you on your journey of returning to the light. Right now, Uranus is in the 12th house, and um, as it makes its way to go into your sign, and there could be spiritual awakenings for some Taurians that are sudden. You know, I think of the Kundalini experience, and I, I was reading a book, didn't get very far, but I'd like, I was checking out from the library, but it was about... Um, about around the age of 41 or 42 is when the natural kundalini awakening it has to do with Uranus, the planet Uranus in some, I don't know if it's in opposition to Saturn or something along those lines, and that it's a natural process. It's kind of like the midlife crisis period. And so some people try, try to raise their kundalini by other methods, and they were talking about how it's, you know, there are warnings about doing that, but when you have Uranus in the 12th house, and the 12th house being the mystical house, this may happen in various ways where you're kind of like, whether you want to call it ascension or satori, where it's like a sudden insight, flashes of insight, uh, whatever, that the, these things are happening. And for Taurus, this is really wonderful because it shakes you out of the complacency that being in a fixed sign can bring where you are you've created this very comfortable world for yourself, but that comfortable world doesn't allow for outer events to shake it to its core. And, and so, you know, there's always, no matter how much people gain materially, there's always the fear of losing it. And that's the paradox of striving for things that can be lost. You can't lose your soul. You can't lose your consciousness. You can only lose um, that which is temporary. So that's something to really focus upon. And I think that you are going to be doing that whether you like it or not. You know, it's going to be coming to you. And good for, good for you because you're going to grow quite a bit. 
And the last card I got is, and, and you might be thinking, well, what does this have to do with my uh, career or my, my work or anything like that? Well, everything has to do with everything. If you have a bad, a bad, like, well, I won't say bad. If you have a toxic, dysfunctional, romantic relationship, marriage, that's going to affect your career. If you don't have good health, that affects every area of your life. So everything impacts everything else. The last card is faith, humanity, and benevolence. And it says, stay calm, trust the good in yourself and others, see the light in the world. So I'm getting these cards about like kind of talking um, Taurus down a little bit. So uh, I wonder if any of you have been experiencing challenges in your life in some way. And Maybe because we're in Scorpio right now, it's kind of ratcheted up because Scorpio is your opposite sign. It forms an opposition and that can, you know, create the understanding of what it is that you may be wanting, but you don't have right now. You know, that's a polarity where it's kind of like you're swinging back and forth. Do I want this? Do I want that? Kind of like the two of swords in, in the tarot. Um... Okay, faith. Okay, let me bring this out here. Faith is the archangel who focused on bringing out our benevolence. Who is focused on bringing out our benevolence? Oh, I didn't know this was an actual person. I thought this was just a concept. She is the twin flame of Archangel Michael and is on a divine mission to help us recognize that humans are basically good and aligned with love. Just like her name, she is all about faith and trust. She reminds us that the world has taught us to believe that we are separate from love and that if we begin to see the good in others, then we will start to cultivate a loving experience of the world around us. Stay calm and breathe. You are a divine being of love who has done so much good in the world. You may be going through personal transformations and feel that you're not getting anywhere, but Archangel Faith is drawing close to guide you beyond the limitations that your ego or fears have created for you. You may be trying to work out whom to trust. First, trust yourself. When you do this and recognize that you are made of love, you will attract those who reflect that love and can enjoy true friendships and loving relationships. Know that good is here to stay. The fact that I got this card along with one of the other cards that kind of hinted at relationships um, suggests to me that this is a period that some of you may be experiencing um, some sort of um, relationship issue. So if so, don't get freaked out by it and think that you need it in order to um, be okay, in order to feel good about yourself. Um, Taurus is ruled by Venus, so there tends to be that emphasis uh, in life on love relationships and sometimes an overemphasis, and that can um, put your whole life out of whack. Codependence can ensue and stuff like that. I'm, I'm actually picking a, a car card from the Law of Attraction deck um, that has like a, uh, an affirmation. Magnetism. Oh, this is right in alignment with um, Venus, actually. I attract and magnetize to me all that I need to get what I want. <laughs> okay, wait. I attract and magnify I attract and magnetize to me all that I need to get what I want. Oh, that sounds kind of strangely worded, but I think you get the gist. And, um, yeah, I think Taurus people are very good at, at magnetizing. Venus is the magnetizer. So definitely don't forget that quality that you have. Sometimes people, that's the thing, they substitute control for simple faith and confidence that they have the ability to get what they want. And um, basically, when you try to get something, 
in a, in a very kind of overreaching way, um, that's actually a lack of confidence that you can have it, and it becomes kind of a desperation. So having that quiet confidence and really believing, having faith that you can have the things that you want is going to go a lot farther. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this, Taurus. If you'd like a private reading, I do life path, career readings, love readings, etc., etc. Please click on the link below. It takes you to rainandmoonastrology.com. Have a great next couple months, the end of 2017. Bye.